Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. Now, in this series, I talk about the more controversial, sometimes underappreciated facts about acoustic treatment that are crucial for you to know in order for the treatment to be a success, in order for you to get your room to translate properly. And in this video, I want to talk about the trifecta of acoustic treatment. So the room, the speakers, and you, because it's all a system and it has to work together in order to get a room that translates, right? So that's what I want to talk about in this video. But before I want to do that, let me help you out with my home studio treatment framework. These are my five steps to treating a home studio and getting it to translate. You can download that for free at the link in the description. And this is basically a top level perspective on all the things that you need to do in order to go from a completely empty room to fully treat it, right? So there are so many things that you need to take care of that you need to consider when treating a home studio. And in many ways, each of these little things builds on some other things that you're doing, right? So for example, the way you place the panels in your room depends on where your speakers are located, where your listening position is located. So you need to focus on that first. So there's a sequence in which you need to go through the treatment process. And that's what the home studio treatment framework shows you how to do. Again, my five steps to treating a home studio and getting it to translate. Follow that in order to make sure that you're not focusing on the wrong thing at the wrong time. Make sure you understand what it is you actually need to get out of each of these steps so that you know that you're on the right track. So if you're in the process of treating your home studio, you wanna figure out what it is you need to focus on next, make sure you download my home studio treatment framework completely for free at the link in the description. So when I talk about the trifecta of home studios, there are really three components, right? So the room, the speakers, and then there's you, the sound engineer, the person working in the room, and they all have to work together. So the acoustic performance of the room itself needs to be good enough in order not to distort the speakers to an extent where they basically become unusable. And the speakers themselves need to be good enough in order to play back what we feed into them as unaltered as possible, again, in order for it to be not unusable. And then you, the engineer, need to be good enough with your workflow, the tools in your DAW, and your ability to hear in order to craft mixes that translate somewhat reliably to playback systems outside of your studio. Note that I've been saying good enough and not perfect, right? Each of these components just needs to be good enough to function. None of them need to be absolutely perfect but they do need to actually function somewhat in order for the system as a whole to work, right? If any of them break away, chances are you're not going to get mixes that translate properly. So it's about getting the balance right between each of these components and understanding which is kind of the weakest link in the chain in order to work on that and get it up to par to again get your mixes to translate. An analogy that might be suitable here might be, for example, running a business, right? In, in a nutshell, you need to have a product or service that people want. You need to consistently and repeatedly get customers through the door. And you also need to tell these customers regularly that they should buy your product or service, right? If you put all these three together, you have a functioning business. If either of those breaks away, you're probably not, gonna, probably not gonna sell anything. So why am I saying this? Well, it's really easy to lose sight of the bigger picture and get hung up on what just one of these components, trying to get it absolutely perfect when it might not even be the kind of weak link in the chain, right? So for example, you might spend days, weeks researching new speakers when the real weak link in the chain is that your room sound, the acoustics in your studio, still has a really uncontrolled low end. Yeah. So in that case, getting a new, more expensive pair of speakers won't change a thing. 
or maybe you haven't figured out a reliable workflow for yourself yet in order to check the quality of your mixes or maybe you're just really bad at implementing that workflow following the steps that you need to take in order to check the quality of your work and so the out the, the quality of your output is just all over the place right sometimes you may have a good day and it'll work out great and then on another day it just goes horrendously wrong and on obviously in that case buying your 10th vca compressor isn't going to change a thing it's not going to make any difference yeah so again the the secret to getting the music to translate out of your studio is making sure that all the components in this signal chain are in balance right so the room the speakers and you and making sure that they all function good enough but the same concept also trickles down into <clears throat> kind of the subcomponents of, of each of these major components right so Thinking about the room acoustics alone, it's not enough to just consider how to treat the front wall or how to get the right balance between absorption and diffusion on its own. It's seeing the room, the acoustics in the room as a whole. It's about getting all the aspects of the treatment good enough so that the room in, in its totality functions properly and keeps the speakers from distorting. So that includes all the aspects of treatment. So low-end control and reflection control and getting the balance between absorption and diffusion right, but also speaker and listener placement. Yeah? And you need to get all of them to a state where they are good enough. Yeah? If you miss out on one of them, chances are your room doesn't work properly and the speakers won't be able to perform as intended. Quick plug, if you need help with this, go to my website and check out my course, Absorber Placement Hacks for Odd Rooms. I'll also link it in the description. And in that, I'll show you exactly how to get the balance right between all of these aspects of the treatment and actually make sure that they are all good enough. So what I want you to take away here is, if you look at the bigger picture, the signal chain that makes your room translate, your studio translate, really, right? So the room, the speakers, and you, the engineer, are they all balanced? Are they all good enough? If yes, great. Then maybe you should stop watching this video and get back to working on some music. But if you think that one of these is still the weak link and needs some improvement, which one is it? The speakers? The acoustics? Or is it you? Maybe you should stop playing Call of Duty and watch another video on how to use a compressor properly. Or maybe just learn how to reference other mixes better. <laughs> That's probably a better, a more worthwhile investment of your time. In any case, let me know in the comments. And with that, let's get back to learning to trust our ears and having fun making music in the studio. I'll see you in the next video.